Now, if you are watching this video, you better never get suckered into a cult ever because you came here for a reason and that's to find out about the bullshit techniques. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about Nexium, which you might know as the Hollywood sex cult in which all of these actresses and pretty young girls got themselves branded with this weird little troll man's initials. I can't tell you everything about Nexium. There's way too many hours on that. If you wanna learn more, please watch The Vow on HBO. It's a nine part series that could stand to be about five parts. A bunch of narcissists need more screen time. But hey, it's a Hollywood cult. What do you expect? What I am going to be doing is rating Nexium against other cults to see where it matches up. This is the first part of my series on rating cults because they're not all created equal. So very briefly, Nexium is essentially the herbal life of cults. It started off as a self-help group and made its way into a vile sex cult, which happens to a lot of cults. That's sort of the end game of cults. I guess you could say that's when a religious sect jumps the shark, when its leader makes some sort of weird, vile sex cult in which he is the dominus and he has all of these little slaves around him. If you're ever in a group like that, just leave. Just leave, just call anybody, call your mom, call your dad, call your sibling, call any women's shelter and just get out of there. So Nexium was started by this man named Keith Raniere who was basically a failure in life. He's done nothing impressive his entire life except con other people. Now, you will say, isn't this very common of con artists? Yes, it is. This is common of contrepreneurs too. You'll see a lot of people on YouTube selling you their courses. There's nothing in these courses you can't find online or in a book for very little money. Frankly, you could go to the library and find out everything that they're gonna teach you in these courses. So Keith Raniere is nothing new. He's not really special. What made him more special is he's kind of a psychopath and he's kind of a sadist and he's a misogynist. And he decided to use his power, his influence over his followers to get sex out of them. I don't know what other way to say that. He's a creep. So somehow, Mr. Raniere, this snake oil salesman, was able to convince many people to pay him thousands and thousands of dollars for these courses, which were supposed to help them. Now, apparently it did help a few people. Self-help can be very helpful. The thing is, it doesn't cost you thousands of dollars. Any sort of self-help you need, you can get online for free. But he was able to convince people to pay him thousands of dollars for these courses. And some of those people, the most susceptible, became his coaches. Now, this coaching system was kind of like a really bad internship. Like you had to work for free for experience. You couldn't hold another job. You were sort of dependent on Keith Raniere and this sort of organization for your entire living. So this kind of isolated people from their families. And this is where the cult part comes in. This is where it goes from, okay, Tony Robbins yelling at you, telling you you can do better, to full-fledged cult, this coaching system. So this went on for many years and nothing would have really come from it if he hadn't turned it into this perverse sex group called DOS, dominant over submissive, or Janus, it's a sorority of young women that were kind of like his harem. And it was led by this actress called Alison Mack, a very minor celebrity. I don't know how these minor celebrities have so much influence. I mean, I never really watched a full episode of Smallville, but I've seen nearly every episode of Supernatural, and I'm not gonna join a cult because one of those guys said so. This is a CW teen drama. Calm down. You're not Schindler's List. You're not an Oscar winner. Anyway, this lady, Alison Mack, who you might recognize from her crazy eyes, was able to convince all of these young women to join his harem, to brand themselves near their vajayjays with his and her initials in this super ugly symbol that they created. They could have really gotten a graphic designer there, maybe hired an artist. It was clear that neither one of them had much artistic talent. Keith Raniere, and I I'm mad at this, I'm mad about this. Keith Raniere came out and spoke ill of artists. He literally said, art is an excuse for those who cannot do. That is a meaningless statement. 
And if he had gotten an artist, maybe they would have had a brand they could show people. As now it's just a bunch of like weird little stick Blair Witch things. Nobody wants that. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is Keith Raniere was arrested. He was given 120 years. Alison Mack was also arrested. Some other women who facilitated him were also arrested and thrown in jail. And now it's all over the news. Overall, this is pretty standard for a cult. Yes, it's wrapped in this new age nonsense, but SSDD, same old, same old. Now I'm gonna go through how I look at cults and how Nexium holds up to the others. So these are the five categories that I consider to be important in a cult. Charismatic leader, vision for the world, quality of the followers, the cult's ability to isolate and manipulate these followers, and last but not least, their practices or rituals. If you have any more to add, please leave them in the comments. We're going to go through how Nexium adds up one by one. First and foremost, a charismatic leader. Now, Keith Raniere was basically a con artist. So what's going to happen on the average with this structure? It's going to perpetuate, right. It's going to go and go. Which happens to be a mark of a pyramid scheme. Several attorneys general investigated consumers by Lang as being a pyramid scheme, and a class action suit was filed against Ranieri based on consumers by Lang's structure. In the years following, Ranieri conceived of various businesses using a model that strikingly resembled the one employed at consumers by Lang. He knew how to manipulate people. He didn't have any real skills. He called himself a scientist. He called his teachings tech, but he was not a scientist. And these teachings were not tech. They were meditation techniques. It's nothing you couldn't get out of one of those books at the checkout at the grocery store. Your basic self-help. Now he was able to turn this into a multi-level marketing company somehow. I don't know. Maybe I needed to get an MBA because this seems like bullshit to me, but somehow it's legal in the United States. So I guess that's what that is. Keith Raniere followed some very simple techniques to manipulate people. They're not hard to find and they're not hard to do. It's just that people with any sort of morals won't do them. For example, he would break down people's personalities and humiliate them just to build them up again in his image. This is not uncommon. Pimps do this to hoes all the time, but Keith is white and Keith is rich and therefore he is a guru and not a pimp. And he got people to pay for it, not everybody. A lot of people went to these seminars and were like, oh, all right, that's interesting, but that's about as far as I'm gonna go. You didn't really tell me anything new. But some of these people so desperately needed guidance that they're willing to listen to what Keith had to say. He also used other techniques to kind of build a community. They had to play volleyball together, which could you imagine anything so annoying as to have to play volleyball with people? And like, it's not enough that you show up. It's not enough that you read the stuff. You have to play volleyball with these people. We'll come back to volleyball when we get into ritual. So was Keith Raniere charismatic? No, zero points for charismatic leader. The second point on cults, vision. What does the cult leader want? What is his message? Sometimes this is easier in religious sex because they actually have a scripture. You know if someone's telling the truth by how closely their words resemble the Bible. How is their interpretation of the Bible or the Quran or the Torah? There's something to base it on. So you can kind of say, oh, that makes sense. Or, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Nexium is self-help. It's this new age stuff that you can better yourself. So there's nothing to base it on. Whatever he says kind of goes. So we're kind of in a weird gray area anyway. And then what did he have to say? Better the self, make yourself better. What does that mean? That seems narcissistic. And the more you watch what these people have to say, the more narcissistic it does seem. The more they're just focusing on themselves, giving passing feelings and emotion the weight that people would give to the Bible or the Quran. It's just so self-absorbed. Keith goes on at length in how to use his teachings to build a better world, but we don't actually see him going out to build the better world. He's just sort of talking around in circles, using these cliches that sound good. The way a person can speak to convince another person is kind of like music sometimes. 
It doesn't really matter exactly what they're saying as long as the inflections hit the right point and it sounds melodic. That kinda was a lot of what Keith Raniere had to say. It was fairly meaningless to me. Of course, I am not a lost narcissistic soul searching desperately for any amount of meaning out there. So maybe I'm not one of his ideal followers. I do not have that pick me cult energy. Nobody wants me in their cult. But when you just listen to what he had to say, he was just repeating these platitudes and these cliches and making it seem as though those things that he was saying had meaning. It didn't have much meaning and certainly wasn't applicable in the world as a whole. And we don't see them actually trying to apply these teachings to the world. We don't see them going out to build houses for the poor or to bring school lunches to kids or trying to make a difference in the world. They do go to Mexico and they say this prayers with people about ending violence and so forth. I give more credit to his Mexican followers for taking meaning in what he says and trying to spread it rather than him actually caring about what goes on in Mexico. It doesn't seem as though he cared that much. He just saw that a lot of these wealthy Mexicans would give him money and they did. And they took his teachings and they interpreted it in such a way that it would be helpful until of course they realized what a weird little sex pervert he was and left the organization. So his teachings were largely either meaningless or harmful and manipulative, putting others down. What's really funny is he would accuse other people of doing exactly what he was doing, being prideful, having too much ego. He would accuse women of being weak and being emotional and not supporting themselves. Meanwhile, he's living off the Seagram's heiress money He's being incredibly emotional when women break up with him. He's not supporting himself. He accuses others of doing exactly what he is doing. His teachings ultimately didn't amount to much. Zero points for vision. If everybody in the world adopted his teachings, the world would not be that much of a better place. Next up, quality of the followers. I've proclaimed my ongoing commitment to improve myself in my effort to be at cause in our world, taking full responsibility as the generator of every single experience in my life. These people are some of the most insufferable people you will ever see. If you somehow make it through all nine episodes of The Vow, you will have a terrible opinion of Hollywood, of the industry, of the upper class, and maybe you should. Maybe you should. These were kind of the worst of all of those people. They were impressionable. They absolutely believed in nothing, which is why they could be sold whatever nonsense came off the top of Mr. Ranieri's weird little head. And they weren't that devout. Some of them were, but some of them were kind of in it for themselves. And then when they saw that, oh, well, this doesn't really suit me anymore. This is kind of weird. They left, which is good, which is good. But that also means they weren't all in. They were not like Om Shinrikyo, not like Jim Jones. These people were not gonna drink any Kool-Aid because of course they had no greater beliefs. This goes back to the vision. There was no vision that he was putting out there. It was all just worship of the self. And all of us know that ourselves are flawed. So there comes a limit to the worship of the self. Perfect example of the couple that made the film, Mark and Bonnie, Bonnie left, Mark stayed in and Nexium wasn't even able to break up their marriage. There's no kids involved. I don't even know if they're shared property, but they couldn't break up a simple marriage. These people didn't care about this cult. So zero points for followers. These people are all awful. And a lot of these people should have gone to prison with Keith Raniere because he wasn't the one out there doing any of the things. They were out there making the movies. They were out there recruiting people. They were out there lying to people. And I'm talking about outside the sex stuff because they did take him down for racketeering. Number four the ability of the cult to isolate and manipulate the followers. I gotta give him a half point on this because the manipulation, although not original, was certainly complete. There were a lot of manipulation red flags that people should have caught early on. And I don't want anybody watching this to not catch those red flags. So what are they? He built people down, he insulted people, he humiliated people, he disrespected the boundaries that people have with their bodies. He moved them away and moved them away from their families, isolated them from their families to a certain degree. Also, if people became problematic, he would sue them. 
However, I only give it half a point because it was passive aggressive, annoying manipulation. So if you said something he didn't like, a lot of these women would call you and say, I heard you said this about Keith. Oh, I heard you said, oh, I heard. So it was just a bunch of hen pecking. Just a bunch of people, annoying, passive aggressive people, just calling you up and annoying you on the phone. And if that didn't do it, then they would annoy you through their lawyers. I can't get behind that. At least Scientology will follow you around. They're willing to get up and get out and go harass you. I bet they're getting a pedicure. I bet their hair is up in a towel and they got cucumbers over their eyes and they're just like, I heard that this happened. Ugh. So I can't give them a full point because they were kind of bitchy, but half a point because they were able to successfully manipulate people. The tactics may have been old, but they used them well. And our last bit of criteria, the practices and rituals of the cult. Nexium had the single most annoying rituals of any cult out there, volleyball. But outside of the volleyball, their practices consisted of people getting together in a room and talking about their emotions. Like emotions don't constantly flitter this way and that. They gave their passing thoughts the same Freudian criticism that you would give Hamlet. The only feelings they did not take seriously were all the feelings telling them, hey, there's something weird about this guy. Hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. All those feelings they ignored. But the other feelings? Scared and lost and confused and like, oh my gosh, am I gonna be single forever? Am I ever gonna be able to have a relationship? What's wrong with me? <laughs> like, ah, all this stuff. The feelings that we all have, they would spend days and days and days just analyzing into oblivion. Very shortly into the, the program, I started to recognize and experience that what I was looking for wasn't about a relationship. What I was looking for was about an experience of myself in my life. Let's briefly touch upon the sex cult because he was able to convince all of these women to join his harem and he is not an impressive man. He was able to say to their faces these misogynistic things to call them children, to call them weak-willed, to say that they annoyed him, to say that men only care for women for sex and nothing else. He said it to their face. They took it as some sort of criticism of their character. Instead of saying, oh, what a creep. What if I never talk to this person again? Instead of saying that, he was able to convince them to brand themselves with his initials. And of course there was group bullying. Any resistance would be turned around and used as my issue. It would prove that I'm entitled, or Lauren could say that I'm mad-dogging. Nexium's term for being defensive. Not every other woman is your friend. Not every other woman has your best interest at heart. Two people have randomly come up to me and asked me if I wanted to be a dancer. One was a woman. One was a man. I know the woman did not have my best interest at heart because she came up to me on the street. And the man came up to me at the dance studio. So one wanted to give me a job in a music video and one wanted to put me on the pole. And you know who was who? The woman wanted to put me on the pole. Not every woman is your friend. Pimps will use a bottom bitch. Keith Raniere use Allison Mack. These are just useful idiots that are gonna do the will of this person. And sometimes the person at the top, that's a woman too. So half a point for practices and rituals to Nexium. So Nexium ends up with one goat head out of five. Overall, a failure of a cult. And that's why it's gone. And everybody's still alive. Fail, 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 and fail. If the Nexium people were working class and weren't incredibly wealthy, we never would have heard about any of this. It wouldn't be all over HBO. It wouldn't be all over Entertainment Tonight. And if the one girl who shall not be named weren't the daughter of someone incredibly famous, she'd be in jail too. Because she was a soldier and a lot of these people calling themselves victims were soldiers. So that's my Nexium rating, one goat head out of five. If you have a cult you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment section and I'll get to it. Subscribe.